for an ambulance. That's more than four times longer than the target time. Well, now, the latest figures from NHS England show that ambulance waiting times are failing to meet targets in many urgent cases. Let's speak to Tracy Nichols, who's the chief executive of the College of Paramedics. Uh, Tracy, very good morning to you. Thank you for your time this morning. Um, I suppose you know in a very practical sense what the reality of these times are, along with those people who've been waiting. We've heard a few of those stories. What do you make of, of the figures and, wh and why ambulances are not able to get uh, uh, within the time frames. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Um, at the College of Paramedics, we represent over 21,500 people who are working on the front line uh, and have been all through COVID. Uh, it, it, this really is a, a, a very strange time. I, I personally have been a paramedic for 27 years and speaking to colleagues who've been in these services for a long time, we, we've never seen a situation like this. And COVID is absolutely a part of that. But uh, what we have is... Um, a, a sort of perfect storm. Uh, so the, the hospitals, the emergency departments and the hospitals are trying their absolute utmost to maintain the flow through the hospital so they can accept the ambulance patients coming in. Um, but everything is being done at the front end, at the ambulance end, to try and uh, stem the flow as much as possible. So there, there, there are always calls from what we would determine as the worried well, people who maybe have difficulty accessing other services in the community, such as the GP and pharmacist and 111 who call us because they simply want some advice or guidance or help or someone to, to check them over, which is understandable, but on an already strained system does, does put more pressure on. But the, the call handlers and the clinicians in the room try really hard to triage those patients out that don't need an ambulance. And then when the ambulance does need to be sent, they'll go, they'll triage the patient, they'll do a clinical assessment and they'll uh, determine whether the patient does indeed need to go into hospital or whether they can be dealt with in another way, signposting in the community or referring back to their GP. When the patient does need transportation, unfortunately at the moment, what happens is the ambulance will turn up at the emergency department and join a queue. Um, the, the beds in the emergency departments have uh, reduced because of COVID, because of infection prevention and control uh, uh, parameters and uh, everything needs scrupulous cleaning and, and maintaining distancing. Um, so it does create this bottleneck uh, where the hospital are trying to manage that demand. But Tracy. then the risk, as you point out is the patients waiting in the community for an ambulance yeah tracy can i just ask you this i know you, you were a paramedic yourself for a very long time as you just described i, I think along with a lot, a lot of other people when i see paramedics and you, you see them driving around and during the pandemic i've thought about it more than ever before about the work they do and the pressures they're under i can only imagine you know you hear these dreadful stories of those people waiting for the paramedics to turn up the frustration of paramedics trying to work within that system and do the very best they can that must be a, a, you know, a kind of added anxiety to a job that has a lot of stress anyway. Absolutely, Charlie, and, and it does impact on, on those frontline crews and the call handlers who are taking call after call. You know, you'll probably see the statistics of every 20 seconds or every 15 seconds a call is coming in with frustrated, frightened uh, people, some of whom are in pain. And then our frontline crews who will be going to a job who will know they've been waiting um, do anticipate that people are going to be frustrated, angry, upset. And that just adds another layer to an already difficult situation. Um, but the compassion and kindness that's been shown is is absolutely incredible. And, you know, thank you to the public for, for being so understanding in, in the majority of cases. Uh, Tracy, thank you very much for your time this morning. That's Tracy Nichols, uh, CEO of the College 